This topic was originally intended to be one video, but to keep it a reasonable length, I'll be splitting it into two parts. Part two will be uploaded this coming Tuesday. Close encounters of the third kind. Contact. Arrival. The idea of humanity's first communication with extraterrestrial life has been an exciting topic for decades. Countless books, movies, TV shows, and every other form of media have long speculated what first contact would look like. Would they be little green men? Giant tentacled monsters? Would we even be able to communicate? What if they're not friendly? As popular a topic as it is for science fiction, how prepared are we for first contact in real life? Since the 1970s, there have been a handful of projects dedicated to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, with varying degrees of funding. One of the earliest major endeavors was known as Project Cyclops, which was initiated by NASA to determine the best way to search for signals from extraterrestrial sources. However, the project's recommendations were disregarded in favor of the less expensive Messaging to Extraterrestrial Intelligence, which simply broadcast messages that intelligent life could intercept. More recently, funding for SETI programs has been massively reduced and has had to rely on private donations to continue the search. But enough about the search for life, what we're concerned about in this video is how prepared we are. Is there any protocol in place for the event of first contact? Perhaps surprisingly, yes, there is. The main official document goes by the catchy name, the Declaration of Principles for Activities Following the Detection of Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Originally drafted by the SETI Permanent Committee of the International Academy of Astronautics, the IAA, the Declaration of Principles has since been approved and endorsed by most researchers involved in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. The Declaration is broken up into eight provisions. 1. Any detection of extraterrestrial signals should be verified as coming from an intelligent source before being announced. 2. Any individual, upon discovering a signal, should communicate with other signatories of the declaration before making a public announcement and should also inform their national authorities. 3. Once a signal has been determined to be legitimate, the astronomical community should be informed, as well as the Secretary General of the United Nations and various other global scientific unions. 4. Following confirmation of intelligent extraterrestrial origin, the discovery should be made public. The individual or group responsible for the discovery has the right to make the first public announcement. 5. All data relevant to the discovery should be published to the international scientific community and stored in accessible form as permanently as possible. 6. If the evidence for extraterrestrial intelligence takes the form of electromagnetic signals, the Secretary General of the International Telecommunications Union should be contacted, and may request to minimize the terrestrial use of the electromagnetic frequency bands in which the signal was detected. 7. No one should respond to an observed extraterrestrial intelligence. Doing so requires international agreement under separate procedures. And finally, number 8. The SETI Permanent Committee of the IAA and Commission 51 of the International Astronomical Union should continually review procedures regarding detection of extraterrestrial intelligence. Additionally, another agreement called the Proposed Agreement on the Sending of Communications to Extraterrestrial Intelligence was drafted to supplement the declaration. It intended to form an international commission, open to any and all interested nations, which would be involved in the process of deciding how to respond to messages from intelligent life. This document promised to determine the contents of their response with respect to the principles of justice, respect for cultural diversity, honesty, and respect for property and territory. It also forbids the response of any one nation without the consent of the rest of the committee, and suggests that if the signal were believed to be hostile, the decision of how to respond should fall to the United Nations Security Council. Well, that sounds pretty good, right? Maybe. Unfortunately, these documents hold no official power. They're more of guidelines than actual rules, and many scientists expect they'd be ignored in the event of real first contact. Contact over long distance is one thing, but what if aliens were to physically land on Earth? Before we look at the possible scenarios, we have to consider historical parallels. Take for example the Columbian Exchange. Starting with Christopher Columbus landing in North America in 1492, the Columbian Exchange refers to the widespread transfer of plants, animals, culture, human populations, technology, and ideas between the Old World and the Americas. Although there were many positive aspects of this mingling of populations, the main effect was disastrous for the natives. Diseases to which the indigenous peoples had never been exposed ravaged their population, causing a huge decline in numbers. Many historians and scientists speculate that the arrival of extraterrestrials would have similar effect on the native populations of Earth. However, it is entirely possible that the extraterrestrial pathogens would have no effect on Earth, as they may only be suited to a small and exclusive set of environments not found on our planet. It's impossible to tell. So, what provisions do we have in place for the event of alien craft landing on Earth? Officially, nothing. No documents, no procedures, nothing at the government level that the public is aware of. 
According to Seth Shostak, a leader at the SETI Institute in California, he's not aware of any government programs, covert or otherwise, that are prepared for physical extraterrestrial arrival. Shostak cites an event from 1997 that he believes should have triggered a response from any such government organization. He says, In 1997, we got a signal that looked pretty promising for most of the day. We thought it was possibly the real deal. I kept waiting for the men in black to show up. They didn't. I kept waiting for the Pentagon to call. I kept waiting for the White House to call. They didn't call. Why is that? An event so historically significant with as much potential for global disaster certainly merits an official plan, right? Well, it's hard to form a game plan when you don't know how the game is played. Any civilization capable of interstellar travel would be at least hundreds of years more advanced than humanity, so it would be very difficult to imagine what their arrival might entail. Shostak compared it to Neanderthals having a plan in case the US Air Force showed up. He has a point. Having a plan might not matter at all. What could we possibly say to a far more advanced civilization that they don't already know? And of course, a knee-jerk military response would probably end very badly for us. So with that in mind, what can we do to prepare? Make sure to stay tuned for the next video where we'll look at the potential effects extraterrestrial civilizations could have on Earth. If you enjoyed the music in this video, it's by some good friends of mine in a band called The Solid Ocean. They're currently running a GoFundMe campaign to raise enough money to get their music recorded professionally in LA. If you have a moment and would like to check them out, I've put a link in the description to their GoFundMe page. One dollar or just a like on one of their social media pages can make a big difference. Check out the links in the description if you'd like to learn more about the search for extraterrestrial life and cultural exchange. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with the latest content. Feel free to leave a like or a dislike as you please, and leave a comment down below with what you think humanity should do to prepare for first contact. You can watch my previous video by clicking here, or watch them all by clicking here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.